Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming on to this workshop. Today's title, Making Healthier Decisions Through Data. It might seem to be, the title might seem to be very uh, deep as if there's some, a lot of things to be done with the information technology, right? But actually, all I wanted to share today, right, is how you can make use of the information that you have gathered around you, health information that you have around you. Okay. Give me a moment. Huh? Okay. Can. Okay. Making use of the health information that is collected from your wearables, uh, from your mobile applications, or even some of the devices you have, right? When you have those, those information, how do you use them right to make healthier decisions and ultimately right to improve your health okay and before i go into the main content let me introduce myself um uh, thank you so much again to smart nation for inviting me back on to share with everybody on how to be healthier and uh why is what has health got to do uh, for all of us here and how does smart nation right actually tie into making healthy, healthier decisions through data. Basically, right, when we take care of our health, we want to make sure that uh, we think about how we can make use of those information. So we are smart about this. That's why that's how we come together, right, with Smart Nation, right, to share with a lot of everybody, right, about health data, okay? So a bit about myself. I'm an exercise physiologist slash sports scientist. And why is that so? Because I've been in this field for the last uh, 10 years. This photo was uh, taken, I think, nine months ago. I, I think you can see I'm uh, visibly a bit thinner now. I think uh, due to, I'm a COVID-19 cyclist. I started cycling, right? Uh, when COVID-19 happened and now I think it has become uh, endemic already. So I've slimmed down about 10 kg. So you can see this is uh, before, this is 2019, April, and this is now. All right, so exercise physiology is basically we deal with uh, preventive health. That means we treat people with uh, lifestyle condition, lifestyle diseases such as diabetes, heart diseases, and we prescribe exercises. Okay, to either complement their present medication so that uh, they can eventually win off it. So this is a field that is still not so common in Singapore because many people still take to medication. Uh, to control like diabetes or cardiac, uh, cardiac diseases. Okay, sports scientists, uh, what I do, uh, I help a lot in youth because I want them to be able to enjoy sports for their mental well-being by how? By doing injury prevention work with them. So I get them to be stronger so that they can prevent sports-related injury. And why you need a sports scientist to do it, right? Because we prescribe the exercises, right? In the context of sports, we treat them like athletes instead of like general public. What do I mean? Because they'll be running harder, they'll be running faster, they'll be exercising more. So what kind of exercise programs do they need, right? To get to that level and to prevent injury. So that's what I uh, do in my role as a sports scientist for them. Yeah, and to be able to do all this, I've uh, studied... Uh, I have a de master degree in exercise and sports studies. And before that was uh, a the exercise and sports science degree from Edith Cohen in Australia. So academically wise, it was uh, done for the last 10 years. It's a lot to study. I'm still studying now. There's so much to read up. And uh, I've been in this field for the last 10 years, starting with Ministry of Defense, uh, then going on to Apple as uh, their exercise physiologist to do with the Apple Watch and also uh, sometime with HPB also. Okay, and yeah, in a nutshell, it's me and I work in uh, MLAB, AMP, oh, it's down here. What does MLAB stands for? It's, uh, MLAB stands for Attitude, Mind and uh, Performance. I'm oh, sorry, Attitude, Mind and Physical. Why A and M comes before physical? Because we need, uh, we need the person, right, to have the right motivation because sometimes we know what to do, but do we have the right motivation or not? So sometimes we do coach our patients or we coach our clients, right, to adopt the right attitude, lah. Yeah, and then mentally you are able to, then mind, right, is whether you are able to focus on the task, whether you are able to 
perform certain movement through visualization. Then the last one will be physical. Once you have the two things in place, right? It's uh yeah, it's the physical part is the easy one already. So AMP also means you want to amplify your health. And then you might ask, right? So exercise physiologists, right? What's the difference between me and like maybe the personal trainer from some gyms and all this? So usually personal trainers, right? What what do you all think? Personal trainers and uh yeah. They, some of them could be a, a three-day cert, right? And they will graduate with a personal training certification. So for most exercise physiologists in Singapore, we have to have a degree and we have to work in a clinical setting and we have to prescribe exercise. So the difference is basically the academic and the professional experience. Uh, yep. All right. Give me a moment. Huh? And let me... Pardon me, I sometimes have to switch in and out because I lock, will lose the cursor and I am, I'm not able to see. <laughs> yeah, okay, great. Okay, so today, right, the takeaway, please, today is more about you than me. So please ask a lot of questions. That, I think that's the beauty of a live uh, workshop where you can really ask me and I can use my knowledge and experience right, to share with you to answer your question. If not, it's, you can just watch a recorded video of me talking okay so please ask me more questions i would love to share with you uh the things that you want to listen to okay so first right today we talk about how to make better health decisions right through data so first we need to find out we need to know where to find the health information first right, and the data correct where to get them what, what are the good sources what are the credible sources okay whether those are accurate or not okay then after that right we know already so am i doing enough for example if i find uh, if somebody tells me or oh, I need to walk, walk 7,000 steps okay or, or my watch tell me I have walked I've walked like 4,000 steps each week is that enough so today I also share with you what is enough okay then the last one is how can we make changes how can we use those information right to make changes basically right if there's a gap 7,000 steps is the recommended but now you are 4,000 right how can we use this information and decide what is the gap to level up and then how can we change, make positive changes. Okay. So the life expectancies, right? How to strengthen my ankle? Okay. Oh yeah, I will try to answer questions right towards the end of the uh, workshop. So yeah. Okay. So life expectancy in Singapore. First of all, right, you want to know, right? What does it mean to be healthier? Can. Okay. We we live for quite a long time in Singapore, our average life expectancy between male and female is 83.5 years. And you can see the blue bar, right? That's the global standard. We are almost right 10 years more than uh, around the world. So good or bad? What do you all think? Can you all type in the group chat? Is it good to live so long? Is that a good determinant of uh, health? Okay, type in the group chat, let me know. Okay, but uh, I can tell you all, Actually, what is more important is the number of years, right, you spend in. Oh, they cannot type. Oops, sorry. Okay. It's the number of years, right, they spend in good health. That is the more important. So even though you can live until 83.5 years old, right, how many years of it, right, do you spend in good health? Good health means uh, you can walk around. When people ask you to carry things, right, you can carry, you can run with your grandchildren and so on. Okay, so for Singaporeans, right, we actually live right 74.7 years of our lifespan in good health. What about the rest? So the rest, right, is actually uh, 8.8 .8 years, right, we are spending poor health. That means, right, there are limitations, which means we cannot walk properly. We are not able to, we are not able to walk properly. We are not able to uh carry things or when we stand up we have difficulty standing up also okay so that is uh, one of the one of the things that you is important to know
Okay. So another thing is also we need to understand to live healthy means we have to make sure we don't have lifestyle diseases. But the Ministry of Health, right, as of 2009, 2018, right, obesity rate has raised to the one of the highest. Okay, 10.5% of Singapore residents are obese. So how can we shorten, right, the number of years, right, spent in poor health? That means just now I say 8.8, .8, right, and we shorten it to, I think, optimally, they don't have a figure, but how much do you want to shorten? Of course, as little as possible, uh, maybe one year in poor health. Okay, you can live so long, right? You want to spend your, your entire life spending in good health. You wouldn't want to spend 8.8 .8 years is one, almost a decade. So how can we do it? Okay, we can do it through, through these four things. Okay, this has been sci scientifically proven, okay, to, to be beneficial to health. We all know that. Exercise regularly, uh, exercise at the right amount, eat well. That means your nutrition must be the right intake. Cannot be too much fats, cannot be too much carbohydrates, cannot be too much protein. It must be balanced so that you get enough vitamins, you get enough minerals, okay, from health. Sleep well. Sleep is so underrated. Like Singaporeans do not sleep enough, you know, because sleep is the part of the day, right, where your body repairs itself and also repairs the mind. It tries to remember what it does in the day, recollect the thoughts, okay, reinforce the memories. And the last one, mindfulness, so distress, okay, practice meditation. So these four things, have you been taking care of all these four things? Okay, I'm going to share with you, right, on these four things and how we can find information on these four things around you, so either through your mobile data phone or either through resources right online. Now I ask you, what kind of health information do you have? All right. You think about it. Where do you usually find health information? Is it from your friend? Uh, from your phone, do you think it's accurate? From your wearable, this one? Is it accurate or not? Can I trust it? Or from YouTube? Or from Channel 8 News? Or from some medical practitioners? When you find health information, right, the first, first thing you need to understand right, is where did they get the information from? What do they study? So, for example, if somebody who is a uh, who studies five years of surgery of cutting people up, then suddenly tells you how to run, would you would you think it's a uh, best advice, or what? Would you rather uh, try somebody right who spent five years of university life right learning how to make the person stronger to run? So think about it. So always question. Uh, the academics of the person, right, providing the advice. Then also, right, the person who is healthy might not necessarily be able to coach you to be healthy. It's like a good student might not be a good teacher. Okay, so these are some of the things to know. Lah. Because some of the health information, right, are given by people who, you know, sometimes you see magazines, right, wow, very ripped, a lot of muscles, right? But those are not normal bodies. You know? Normal bodies don't have such big muscles or they, these people spend their entire day training on. But people see that as, a perception of health because that's the stereotype now but that's not health that's uh extreme end ready a normal healthy person right will be able to walk properly not look normal okay probably look like me la. i'm a bit thin now but yeah okay and these people right probably right and if they study exercise and sports science like me right into preventive health right probably can give you the best advice and like people like me who have coached people to be healthier already and yeah you want to find people who have done it. You want to find good teachers, not good students. Okay? So, think about it. So, health information can come from your smartwatches. Okay? That is the left side. Okay? Uh, you can... <laughs> you can... Uh, also, from medical devices on the right side, you know, you that, the person that is sleeping, right, she has a... A medical, sorry, she has an electronic device that she lies on and it can detect the quality of sleep through her movements. Okay, this all can be purchased and also through your mobile devices. It's powerful enough to track because now all mobile devices, right, are like mini computers like that. And if the mobile application is good enough, which means the software developers, right, uh, they have good algorithms, they have good artificial intelligence to learn and they continue to input the most accurate data. Your mobile applications 
on health, right, would be good enough to tell you what you are doing right and to reflect the good, uh, to reflect accurately, right, what you have been doing, your heart rate, okay? So the hardware is important, the software is important. All this information you can find online, how do they develop it? Okay, but I can safely tell you that Apple devices, right, they are quite accurate because of the hardware quality. And also they have an in-house team of exercise physiologists, right, to produce all these uh, data also. So everything is done in-house. They didn't purchase the information from anyone. Although it's a bit expensive, but I've, to some people, uh, because it's subjective, right, price. But if you are finding somebody to take care of your health, uh, finding a device, right, to tell you what you have been doing to collect your health data, right? You want it to be accurate. So I think this kind of money, right? Uh, you might have to consider what is the return on investment now, okay? If it's something that's important to you, then you need to uh, get something that's accurate, even though it costs a bit more if you can afford it, okay? So... Oh, uh, device, the slide moving. Now I'm on to the slide which shows the exercise ring, the green ring, and the phone and the watch. Emeline, can you see if the slide is moving just before I move on? Okay, anyway, uh, people, if the slides are not moving at this point of time, right, please feedback to the moderator, okay, so that we can know. Okay, great. Thank you for the feedback. All right, so the kind of information, right, that your watch and your mobile application can provide you, right, first is your exercise minutes. Second, what kind of food you are eating, okay, this you need to input yourself. But there are certain applications, right, that you can actually scan the barcode of the food item and then the nutritional value of the food item will be automatically, right, input into your mobile application. Then the last one, right, also show you how much sleep you have been uh, doing, okay, how, how many hours. Ken? Thank you, Mary. Okay, these are the information, right, that you can get from your mobile application. So it will be displayed like that. So I'm going to share with you, right, what all this means and how can you make, make use of this information, right, to make healthier decisions about your life. Of course, like what I say, right, the motivation to change, to make a positive difference to your health, right, must be there first because that's the most difficult. Like they say, right, the most difficult part about running is what? Putting on the shoes. Actually, one that's the hardest part. It's the same thing. Like I want to go and cycle in the morning. I wake up at 5 a.m. today, right? To go out and cycle, right? To get out of my cozy bed to cycle. That's the hardest part. But once I get up, I put on my cycling shoes, right? I think I have committed myself to it. So the attitude is the most important. How to know? Think about why you want to do this. You must have a strong motivation to do it. Okay. And I talk about credible health information sources, right? What is for the general public, like all of us, we want information that has already been screened and vetted. Because like YouTube, if you have time, of course, you can go and screen it and vet it. Like you can go and find out the person that's talking, like who is he, what has he done, who has the coach, okay, what is his background, what is academic. I think it's good to be more careful because these are information to do with your health. Okay? If you use the wrong information, you waste time, you might be following the, and the worst case scenario, you might result in serious injury or illnesses. Uh, that it, you cannot be more sure because nowadays health information right, is too easily disseminated by a lot of random people. Okay? So why, where you can find it? You can look, American College of Sports Medicine, you can take a screenshot. Uh, these are good sources of incredible health information, especially about exercises. How can exercise improve your health? NSCA. Uh, SI, SI is from Australia, Exercise Sports Science Australia. They are the governing body to control it. Do you know that in Australia, right, you can actually claim, right, under insurance for exercise uh, programs, which means, right, even if you are not sick uh, or you are at risk for pre-diabetes, that means you haven't got diabetes yet, but you have uh, markers for pre-diabetes for diabetes already, right? You can actually go to an exercise physiologist like me who has gone through a degree in it and actually claim insurance. So that 
it makes sense why, why you want to prevent it before it happens, right? If you don't prevent it before it happens, probably it's going to cost the healthcare system more money, right? So that's what SR regulates also, okay? Allied Health Professional Council in Singapore, it regulates uh, health practitioners that are under the healthcare system, which means like physiotherapists, okay? Uh, nutri diet I think dietitians also, Okay, occupational therapists, people who are who can work in clinical settings, and health promotion board too. Okay, health promotion board is under Ministry of Health lah, and NUHS, Center of Longevity. Okay, NUHS Center of Longevity, right? They are they have just been set up, but you can go to their website. Quite a lot of good information. They are there to help the public, right, to live longer in good health. So they are doing research on what can we do. Okay. Then after that, Singapore Medical Association, Singapore Physical uh, Physiotherapy Association. So all these are governing body, right? That puts out good health information sources. That means they vet through. Okay, there are certain practitioners, right? Sometimes people do call themselves doctors, but you must understand doctor, when you call yourself a doctor, right? It comes with a very heavy weightage. That means your words. Because a lot of public thing, when you call yourself a doctor, right? You are a medical doctor. Oh, okay, there must be trust. Because of course, uh, the doctor's uh, academic qualification is uh, very high. And the experience, the amount of training they go through to earn that title. But not everyone who call themselves a doctor, the DR is a doctor. Some studies four years, right? Then they, they are they terms a doctor and then they practice in uh, healthcare. You know, like some certain practice, practice like, then, then they say, oh, we can do this. But they are not medical doctors. They just, the doctor is conform, conferred by their university. So be careful, all right? Not everyone who call themselves the doctor is a medical doctor. Okay. okay, can I quickly answer some questions before I go on? Okay. Uh, otherwise, there will be a backlog then. Uh, towards the end, will be quite hard also. So, uh, so B, right? How to strengthen your ankle? I would say depends if it's uh if you have a pre-existing injury, then you have to see a physiotherapist first. Okay, if you don't have a pre-existing uh injury, right, and you are strengthening to play sports, it's good to find a strength conditioning coach, somebody who has an exercise and sports science degree or an experience, right, in uh training athletes successfully help you strengthen your ankles. Basically, ankle strengthening right, can be done with resistance training la, and jump training and agility, uh, agility training. But how much to do, right? that's the main question. right? It's like how to cook uh, laksa. I can tell you all the ingredients. Oh, laksa inside got noodles, got this. But actually, right, I need to show you how to put everything together. right? So that one really, if you want the most effective uh, approach, right, find a professional to help you. Okay? It's not because I'm in this trade to that's why I promote my own industry. But you think about what I say, right? It makes sense. Anything that is random uh, on the internet and all this, right? Your results will be random because it's not prescribed to you. It's like going to not even if you go to buy a clothes, right? It's not even uh SML, you know, the sizing is you go and take a general sizing, right? One size fit one input. It might fit, it might not fit. Okay. So if you want to shine and go find somebody, uh find a professional to help you. A strength conditioning coach, uh, probably with an exercise and sports science degree. Okay, with what some of the certification now here. Ken? Okay, and with COVID life expectancy may no longer be accurate. Yeah, uh, Boon Heng, uh, good question. I need to go and find out more because right, there's no long longitudinal studies about COVID. Uh, people with COVID-19 and what is the life expectancy? It just happened over the last two years. So I have no answer for that and probably will know, right, in what, I don't know, in a long time, when there's a longitudinal study, like, that means they can track this person with COVID and how many times COVID and then see, compared to with uh, less time of COVID, what is the difference? Okay, but good question. It's good to question whether people with COVID-19, right, how will the life expectancy be? Okay, why anonymous attendee? Why do doctors and ministers tell us to sleep and get richer when they work later? They seem to work. Oh, okay. Wow, this one uh <sighs> tricky question. Uh. I think we have to take care of our own health first. Lah. I mean health is wealth. Lah. Okay, so uh 
find good health information, okay, practice it and really focus on our own health. That's the most important. Okay. Done. 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 Okay, I feel anonymous attending. I feel sick and exhausted by the following exercise. Should I push myself to follow? No, no, no. Yeah, is there a mental issue, right? So a lot of people, right? Sometimes even though the recommendation is uh, like five days a week, six days a week, they must do this, right? Not necessarily must follow, you know, because even though there's optimal health, right? But attitude and the motivation to follow through is the most important because you must sort that out first. So we find that it's too challenging, right? Regress first, even though it might not be the recommendation, but you need to regress first, find something you can sustain and uh, carry on, okay? Yes. Then once, right, you say, for example, the recommendation is three days, right? I say, wow, well, I cannot, I cannot do it because it's too much already. I have from zero to three days suddenly, right? It's like a big jump for me. Why don't I start with one day a week? And then after six weeks, hey, I can do it. I have done one day a week. I feel good. I get, I got the motivation. I thought I couldn't do it. Ah, then you want to uh, go on. Okay, let's try two days now. So the first thing is to take baby steps first. Get the motivation get the feeling of success and then that's then that's how we can progress to the recommended days. That's how we do with our clients also. Initially, when they come in, they don't need the, some of the clients are 60 years old, they don't even want to touch the dumbbell, you know, but you need to do it. You need to do resistance training, you know, lifting weights, right? But we slowly progress them baby steps and now they are lifting what? One hand, right? 8 kg each. The person is 60 years old. Okay, incredible. Huh? So baby steps first. Okay, good question. I work in rotating shift. Wow, yeah, this is, uh, I work in rotating shift. The question is, I work in rotating shift, sometimes daytime, sometimes midnight, suffering from insomnia. Yeah, this is, uh, wow, this, I have clients who are doing this also. They are bankers. They, they go on US time, so they sleep at 5 a.m. and they wake up at 7 a.m. to exercise with us. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not sustainable. La. How to exercise and sleep better. Okay. We are not able to follow the recommendation due to your schedule. But when we have these issues, right, what we always think right, is how do we mitigate? How do we do damage control? So first, right, how to exercise. Okay, at least right, whenever you have time, right, still clock in certain minutes of exercise. Even though the recommended minutes are 30 minutes, okay, you should try to do at least half. Something that is feasible for you. Can okay, something is better than nothing, but it still need to do something. And if you if possible, right, try to do it before the start of a shift because by the end of the shift, right, I think okay, pretty much you are you have exhausted a lot of energy already. So usually that's what we recommend our clients. Lah. And sleep better. Okay, sleep right, the because the circadian rhythm is disrupted, right? And the body doesn't know when to prepare itself. Uh, what you can do is really to insomnia. Uh, insomnia, don't try to don't try to catch naps in between. Okay, sleep, cater time to sleep, sleep through it. And if you feel tired in a day, right, don't sleep more than 20 minutes. Okay, otherwise, right, you will, you will go into deep sleep and you wake up even more tired. So try to catch naps in between, but lesser than 20 minutes. So these are things that we can do to mitigate it. Yeah, I cannot ask you to change job lah, because some people just don't have the option to do it. But you have to do, you have to mitigate uh, this. Okay. My cycling makes like you change smoke when cycling, but they can cycle faster. Oh, okay. So this is a good answer. So my question, my answer to that, if you don't smoke, right, you can cycle even faster. Okay. And cycling faster, right, it so depends on a lot of things. Lah. It also depends on their exercise history, maybe they were cycling before and they were have, maybe they were runners before, okay? But I can definitely tell you, right, the long-term effect of chain smoking, right, your lung capacity will be affected, okay? Your ability for your blood, for, uh, for your blood to carry oxygenated blood, right, will be affected, definitely in the long run. If you, trust me, if you keep at cycling, okay, and with this cycling mates to chain smoke, right, in the long run, right, you will surely be fitted at them. Long run means 10 years later, uh, okay? And yeah, so that's my thing.
And definitely it will affect your aerobic fitness one. That's for sure like, in the long run. Maybe not this week, next week, but in the long run it will. And interesting, like, if you are cycling for health, right? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure why people would like to smoke. So it's like doing something good and then after doing something bad, you just offset each other. Jesse, hi Jesse. Okay, for the earlier graph, can I check? Oh, okay, sorry, it's not uh, the blue one, right? It's Singapore life expectancy. The green one is global expectancy. The female and male, right? I, I, let me see whether I can. Let me, let me share with you. Okay, for healthy life expectancy, uh, okay, in Singapore, for male, it's 73.7 years. You're spending good health. For female, it's slightly longer, 75.2 years. Okay, for it's 1.5 years longer la, for female, maybe. Can? That's for the healthy life expectancy. Where can one find a professional? Okay, you can. Where can one find? Uh, MLab has one, which is me. And then you can find. Uh, good question. Uh. CGH, exercise physiologist at CGH. Yes. Uh, NUHS, you can check with Center of Longevity also. Yeah. Trainer was qualified. Actually, some of the personal trainers, right, even though they go through a weekend course or one week course, right, they can be good coaches also. Okay. It's just that you need to know their work. What have they done? Before? What have they done? Are they just on aesthetics like this? What, what is their training style? Because some of the people that I see when they train their clients, right, it's, the safety is one of the most important things. Like they will stand on the bench or they will do things. They misuse the equipment. So this is, this is a kind of malpractice. Right, but people who come from clinical setting like me, right, we are more careful because we work in hospital, right, and we we uh we value safety a lot. But these people, they come, blah, blah, all these right. Some of them, they are just very uh how to say. There's a lot of uh hype, lah. Yeah. So go to NHS, CGH, uh, or you can contact us. I will see who I can. Yeah, you can contact us, lah. Correct. Okay, if, if, but if you don't want to train with me, I can also refer you to somebody. Like most important, right? Healthcare practitioners, right? It's a very personal choice one. Okay, it's not like, okay, we are healthcare practitioners. Most important thing is your well being. That's it. <laughs> okay, is it true that we get older, right? Okay, I'll answer one more question. I'll continue the slides. Huh? Okay, is it true that we get older, we should not do jogging as a form of exercise? Uh, no, actually not really. It depends. Uh, if you have pre-existing injury, right, or injuries that you have not resolved, right, yes, the mechanics right, will, will wear out in your knees. But, right, if you have strengthened your knees, it's still okay to continue jogging, okay, without any pre-existing condition. If you can, it's a, it's a myth. There are old people that are still running and walking about. Okay, of course, there, there will be wear and tear. La. So your intensity or volume right, might not be as much as before. Okay, but it's still recommended to do it. Okay, let me go on. Uh. So this is the health recommendation. What you should be doing. Okay, uh, to prevent physical inactivity, right? You must exercise at least three days a week at 30 minutes, okay? Moderate intensity, yeah? For best health effects, five days a week, 30 minutes. You look at this, how many of you have actually done it? Okay, I also can raise my hand. I didn't actually do it on some of the weeks. Lah. It's not easy, but you all have to take it as a part of responsibility. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of uh, reasons, right? Work, family, and all this, right? But take, think of it as savings. Lah. If you do it now, right? Basically, you are saving up your health for when you're older, your health expectancy will be longer, okay? Can And for people who want to improve body composition means increase muscle mass, reduce body fat, right? It has to be five days a week at 60 minutes. And I'm sharing with you all this, it's not to ask you from zero to jump to straight to this, you know. These are the recommended one. You can have to progressively go up and go and find a healthcare professionals that can help you, can. Anyway, I hope that because we are working with NUHS Center of Longevity, right? We hope we can set up the exercise and sports science society soon, right? So that you people who wants 
to go under an exercise and sport scientist, right, to do preventive health, you all will be able to find the resources or find the right practitioners instead of just going to a person who has just done a weekend course in fitness. If you think about it, personal training courses, right, there's no failure, everybody pass. So how... So we think about that, uh, the rigor of the academics, okay? Optimal health benefit for resistance training, uh, it must be at least two days a week, you know? That's quite a lot, uh. Two days a week, and then you must do, okay, uh, 10 to 15 repetition or 8 to 12 repetition, okay? And you must target at least 8 to 12 muscle groups. So this is the health recommendation, okay? So this data, right, comes from HPV, Ministry of Health, ACSM. These are credible and this has been researched by scientists okay, who have followed. So these are what I say credible resources that you can actually depend on. Okay, you see elderly can also still get stronger. Let me show you. Okay, I'll play. This is my client now. On the, on the left-hand side of the screen, right, you can see the person when she gets up, right, it's a bit unsteady. But after four weeks, right, you can see she gets up and down, especially at the end, right, if you see on the left side, Okay, nearer to the elderly word, just below the elderly word, right? She gets up for the last repetition, she needs to use the right leg to stabilize. But the left side underneath the stronger word, okay, don't need. See? And you can see the hip, right? See, it's shifting. But for the video under the right side, the stronger word, you can see the hip is very steady, up and down only. And you can see, right, she needs to use the legs to support. That was the start. So this is 60 year old and you can actually get stronger just like this. And she has also knee issues also. So sometimes healthcare practitioners say, oh, we can't do this, can't do that. There's uh, my, one of my patients, right, who has uh, back issues, right? They say, oh, you just walk, you cannot lift weights. But now, right, without any issues, he is lifting 40 kg squats. Okay? And his muscle mass actually improved and no condition. Last time, he cannot even stand 10 minutes without any pain. Now, 30 minutes, no problem. So think about it. Exercise prescription is quite regressive in Singapore still. We can make a difference. Okay. And by exercising, right, we can also reduce heart and circulatory disease by up to 35%. Okay. Uh, moderate intensity means uh, 64% to 76% of your maximum heart rate. So you just use 220 minus your age. Okay. And then you complete. Okay. This is the exercise. This is the, when you run, right, you must run like this so that your heart health will improve. Your, vascular, your respiratory system will improve. Or when you run or you fast walk, right, you must walk fast enough that you sweat. When people talk to you, you cannot talk like me like that. This is at rest. You can only mouth a few words. Okay, later, we still have one more round. Okay, so this is the kind of intensity that we should be doing. Okay, so now, if you look at where you can find information, this is from uh, Apple Fitness Watch. What does this tell you? If you have Apple Watch, right, or you have Garmin, right, they should be able to tell you how many days, right, you have been exercising. Okay, if we see the green bars, right, four out of seven days. Just now I told you, right, to be an active person so that you're not at risk for uh, physical activity diseases like diabetes, cardiovascular disease, right? You need to be at least three days of exercise of 30 minutes, right? I have done four days of exercise. And the four days of exercise, I have clocked 107 minutes, right? For each day. So I'm, how many? I'm triple the amount for each day, la, because I'm, I cycle. La, and I cycle at moderate intensity. So this is the information, right? That can help you to cover the gap. What if, right? You look at your fitness app and you say it's only two days, what must you do? That means you have to have one more day to clock in, okay? And if you look at the exercise minutes per day, the one I circle in the red box, if it's say 15 minutes, what must you do? Maybe you can go to 20 minutes first instead of just double, okay? A rule of thumb, right, is just to increase by 10% each time, okay? And so that is more progressive, okay? So you got health information, look at the recommendation, then you look at what your the data, right, that your health application actually provides you, then you see, oh, what is the gap? What can I do? Ah, what must I do to level up? Of course, if you want to do it yourself, right, it's a bit of uh, trial and error. So at the end of the day, still find an exercise physiologist to help you or somebody to advise you. Yeah, that would be very good. You, you, yeah, you don't need to go stress. 
go and find somebody who has uh, studied for the last five years to do this. <laughs> okay, so that's the first thing, right? Then second, right, when you look at a dietary app, okay, this is called Loose It. L-O-S-E-I-T is an app on the app store. When you download it, right, and you key in what you eat, for example, like breakfast today, I had toast and eggs. I can key in and can tell me how much fats, how much carbs, how much protein that I've eaten. Okay, depending on what kind of diet, right, I'm going for. Is it a low carb diet? Is it a low fat diet? I can adjust the percentage. So you must have app to support you. If you don't have, you can go and download it today and then you can just key in, right, for the next six weeks what you eat, right? It's going to be an interesting reflection, you know, because like one of my clients, right, who needs to put on weight, actually, actually a lot of us, we say we want to lose weight, lose weight, but there are people who want to put on weight. So we found out, right, through this app, right, clock in his uh, diet, right, he's short of 1,000 calories each day, you know, and we're trying to force feed him, which is quite sad, like, it's quite, quite difficult. So we are doing it progressively and we are engaging a dietitian to help him because I'm not a dietitian, okay? I just study this uh, at the very basic level that I can provide general advice. So at the end of the day, I always think, right, should leave it to the experts to do it, okay? you So I, because the outcome then will be good. Lah. Otherwise, try and error, waste time, waste resources, waste money. So if you look at the bottom of the pie chart, right? Basically, right, the protein 10 to 35%, fat 20 to 35%, carbohydrate 45 to 65%. Why is there a range? It depends on what kind of diet you want. So people who want to improve for weight loss, right, if your BMI is too high, usually their carbohydrate intake, right, is only 40%, okay? Or a low-fat diet is 20 to 35%, okay? And the diet that is high in protein, because the person is training very hard, means like two hours each day, the protein percentage, of the meal can be up to as high as 25%. So once you have key in your food item, right, and you look at the top, right, it will tell you whether you have taken enough, okay, based on your requirements. So next, sleep. If you look at it, right, how much sleep do we need? Okay. Uh, when we are an adult, we need at least, right, seven to nine hours of sleep. Okay, that's very important. Uh, seven to nine hours. Okay, I'm guilty. I For the whole week, I slept only, I think, four and a half hours or so. Yeah. So, I think one of the questions is, right, like, how come I keep telling you all to be healthy, right? I also never do some things. Yeah, so I need to reflect also. So, again, right, how can I make the changes? But at least I know, right, my, this is, this is me. So, now that I know, right, for hours 23, right, I have this data, right, how can I increase another three hours? Okay, definitely. Lah. So I have to make, I have to strategize. Okay, so it's important. This is the sleep app from my Apple Watch. There are also sleep app that you can download on your phone and put beside your bed. Can. Okay. And so some strategy is first, right? Uh, do protect your time to sleep. Okay, organize your work so you can finish your work uh, early. Then if you, some people, they cannot sleep, right? Because they have a lot of things going on their mind. They should write, take down notes, okay? So that they can clear their mind, write down the notes and just chuck it one side and go to sleep, okay? So why is sleep important? For people who are trying to improve body composition, means lower body fat percentage, increase muscle mass percentage. Uh, sleep, right, will cause you to lose uh, when you are on a weight loss diet, if you don't have enough sleep, actually you lose more muscle mass than compared to some people, right, who has enough sleep, okay? You see the person on the right, the person with the smiley face, the person with the set face, right, they've gone through the same exercise program, same diet. The only difference is different duration of sleep. The person lost, right, 2.4 kg, right, of muscle mass, you know, even though they lost the same weight, but the same weight, right, 2.4 kg of muscle mass, right, without enough sleep is attributed, okay, yeah, to lack of sleep. Whereas the person with enough sleep lose equal amount. This is from a study. Okay, so sleep notification, which I will on now, when it's time to sleep, I will try to go to sleep.
Last one, mindfulness. Okay, this is tricky, right? Because mindfulness, why, why do I need to do this? Is, is this necessary or not? Yes, it is. Because it, you protect time, right, to wind down. Okay? And studies have shown, right, that by winding down, you actually can focus better after eight weeks of meditation exercise. So just five minutes a day, come down, focus your attention on your breath or download a meditation app, right? You can actually have better working memory, means you can remember things better, focus better. Of course, sleep will affect also. If you must have good sleep first, then you can do all these things. Sleep ultimately is the most important one. Yeah, we have better emotions, less negative emotions, okay? So again, if you have a wearable that tracks your mindful minutes, how many times you have done it, right? You can also understand. So for me, it's four minutes on average in January. La. Yeah, this was from previous uh, data. Okay, so if you think, right, the recommendation is every day. That means if you are short of a few days, you need to think how to level up again. Okay, I think in a nutshell, right, it's always important to have uh, hardware and software that can provide you data, good data, so that you know what you are missing based on the general recommendations from credible health sources. Okay, so before I round out the session, right, uh, let me answer the rest of the questions. Okay, I have another 30, 14 more questions to answer. Okay, anonymous attendees say it's Twina, TCM Twina, you swap physiotherapy. Which one cures faster and cheaper? It depends on the condition. They are good, but if you ask me, right, they are good traditional medicine practitioners also that are certified. I can't remember the association that uh, certifies it. Again, right, check the academics and qualifications, okay? It depends on the conditions that you have, but what conditions are good for TCM, right? I'm not sure because I, I don't practice it, you see. Yeah. Maybe I should go and find out more. Okay, so yeah, check their qualification. Which what type of exercise is best to improve core strength? Okay, uh, this this again, right? This kind of answers. Uh, this kind of question would be like, what kind of noodles, right? Is the best for spaghetti? I can tell you, right? But at the end of the day, right, use the noodles, right? You overboil it, it becomes soft and so on. It becomes soft, or you don't cook it enough. So there are Plank exercises, okay, generally, right, I can advise you, exercises, right, that keep the trunk stable are what I recommend for most people. So like plank, side plank, because if you think, you, if I stand up right now, I'm sitting, right, some of you might be slouching, right, you want to be have an upright position. Right? What the trunk is doing is holding you up. So exercises, right, should be done to stress the trunk, right, to have the strength to hold you up throughout the day. So this kind of exercises would be the best. But how much to do? What's the frequency you do? Okay, it really depends on what you have been doing before and we build on it. Can so to sum it up, any exercises that stresses the trunk right to be stronger to hold yourself in a static position. Okay. I try to wake up at 4 8 or 5 a.m. to exercise. Oh, okay. But I often have to go to the toilet a lot, even when it's starting good. How do I solve this issue? Uh, wow. This issue, it's uh, it's like the core of nature, right? I think I think it's a good thing that you have a uh, regular course of nature, lah. I don't, uh, unless you are meeting with a group, right? Then I think it's just logistical problem, uh. Okay, so can I exercise morning and night? Yeah, of course you can. It depends on whether you have enough time, whether the volume is too much for you, the intensity is too much for you. Some people train two days, a, twice a day but they have no issues because previously they have been doing this for the last 10 years. But if you are starting from zero and starting going to two days, it's not recommended for sure. Always like 10%, uh, 10 increment. Okay. If you feel good exercising every day, you don't need to rest because every day you should be moving. You get what I mean? At the end of the day, right, the program right, must be tailored to your present condition such that you don't overload yourself and like I say, right, best to find somebody, right, to design a program for you. I mean, if you start to tailor something yourself and you are not, you have not studied enough, right, then it's trial and error again. Uh. I know I've been repeating this a lot, but it, it tell me, do I make sense or not? Yeah. Okay. Can I exercise migraine? No, don't exercise when you feel unwell because you will make poor judgment and sometimes, right, 
Yeah, you might not know what is the condition. If you exercise migraine, exercise headache, let it, it's best to rest. Okay. Recurring from calcaneum fracture after eight weeks of non weight bearing. Now trying to cover Oh my, 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 my. Okay. Why? Mm. Okay, actually, physiotherapy should help. I would think, right, the exercise, uh, you need to check it with your physiotherapy, okay? Because, right, your... Okay, the question from this attendee is recovering from calcaneal fracture, which means the heel, heel bone, now, to put it very simple. After eight weeks of non-weight bearing, now struggling to recover the muscle loss and fitness. So it, now in month four already, which is 16 weeks, uh, still limping. By right, right, if you have been seeing the physiotherapy, right, from the start of the rehab program, right, you should have recovered and you should be walking already. Month four, shouldn't be limping already. Yeah. I, you should go and check back with your physiotherapy or go and find a new physiotherapist. Okay, they will be able to help. For dietaries, TCM, chiropractor will not help, to put it simply, because this is a rehabilitation uh, field. All right. And chiropractor, uh, you have to please go and read. First of all, chiropractor, that is, they are not covered by any association in Singapore, which means if there's any malpractice, right, uh, you, can, you, should, you can only waste it on your case. If, uh, yeah, that's it. So think about it, okay? Are there any accurate exercise watch that measure blood pressure? Oh, can I measure? Your, when your blood pressure, how high is it? Uh? Yeah, I think that's the important thing to see. You shouldn't... Mm, actually, exercising... Okay, if you, are, if you have hypertension, right? When you exercise, uh, you can exercise, but you need a healthcare practitioner like us, right, to manage it. So that means you must monitor your steps before and after your exercise, which cannot let your blood pressure go past a certain point. Okay, and exercise will help to lower the blood pressure in the long run. There's no wearables, right, that can measure blood pressure now. So what we do, right, is usually the person will walk on the treadmill, we attach the blood pressure machine to the uh, arm, and then we will measure it while the person is exercising. Uh, yeah, correct. So to make sure, right, the blood pressure is always below the threshold. Female, seniors, switch spots there, but I swear. No, it's not a losing battle. The resistance training, right, you can mitigate. There'll be muscle loss still, but right, actually you can mitigate the amount of muscle mass loss. It's first of question, right? Okay, so the question is, female senior age 64, please walk, swim, stair climb, but still, and doing resistance training, still experience muscle mass loss during annual screening. It's not... Is this a losing battle? That's the question. No. If you have been doing all this right at the right volume and right intensity, right, the amount of muscle mass loss, right, that you experience, right, should be within norms due to aging. And it shouldn't affect your daily functions. That means you still have enough muscles to walk without feeling tired, to carry things. Okay, it shouldn't affect your activities of daily living. Of course, you cannot be like the past by activities of daily living, like mopping the floor, doing house chores, lifting things, right? should still be uh you should be still be able to do it correctly so my advice to you right is to find somebody to help you right to program to do the exercise program yeah so that you can really through the exercise right exercise program right mitigate the muscle mass loss okay lower the rate of loss mm. okay Next question. I don't have much money, so I eat instant noodles every day. Uh, what, what is the question? Mm, okay. Oh, I think maybe maybe it's about diet. Lah, and I can empathize us because sometimes healthy food might be a bit expensive. Mm, but I think there are, yeah, this is tricky. This is tricky. Mm, I also don't have an answer for it. Yeah, this is a sad thing. I, also, I admit that. So sometimes, right, healthy food is not accessible to everybody. Like salad, you know, right? One bowl of salad is $12. How many people can afford? <sighs> For me, right, I go to cold storage, it's at least $5. It's still not cheap, but it's still more affordable. Lah. So eating healthy sometimes is not economical. 
Okay, got it. Okay, I will answer the last. Yes. Okay, I will answer. I will. I don't have time to answer all the questions. All right. Uh, thank you so much for the answer because we are short of time already. I will. Yeah, I would introduce the last few bits about my clinic, and then we will hand it over to the moderator. Again. Okay, so a bit about my clinic, right? We do preventive health, which I explained just now. People who wants to prevent the loss of muscle mass, okay, and to really change their, to be healthier, right? Through exercise prescription done by somebody like me, exercise physiologist who have studied in this field. Okay, and then also sports performance, right? We do actually more on joint prevention for the youth. Lah. For adults, yes, you can still come to us, but we have been doing a lot with schools, trying to help the children, right, to be strong. And so far, right, a lot of the children that have gone through our program, right, has almost 0% of uh, sports injury incidents. That means, like, run by themselves, that's a science and go hardly happen to them. Okay, and corporate wellness, we like to share. Okay, basically, we are out here, right, we are sharing, we are part of, we are going to be part of NUHS, uh, we are going to be part of the Exercise and Sports Science Society, right, we are trying to push this message of preventive health through exercise. By exercising, you can actually change a lot of things about health and be healthier, and uh, how much to do it, and all this, and try to take less medication if possible. Yeah, yeah that, and if you don't need to go to surgery, exercise can help. Also, yeah, so we are very big on this. That's why we are always going out to share this kind of health information. And the last one, find out more about us. You can scan it. This will direct you to our clinic Google map and you can read the reviews. I think the reviews will speak for itself about what we do. Uh, yeah, 